Well, the organization American Bridge 21st Century has launched a six-figure ad campaign focusing on Puerto Rican voters in the blue wall swing states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And joining us now, senior advisor for that organization, James Carville. He's also co-host of the Politics War Room podcast. Also with us, the group's co-founder, Bradley Baychuk. Uh, Joe, you have the first question. Hey, James, uh, let, let you, you probably heard our conversation talking about how the false uh, sort of the, 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 you know, the sticking their chest out on the Trump campaign. We've been talking about how we think it's a tie. I'm curious, how are you looking at this race with about five days to go? Well, both Brett and I, degenerate gamblers, said I would say take Harris over 270 electoral votes. Let these fools in these crypto markets do something. Let them, let them drive the betting line into a favorable place and then take advantage of it. That's what I would do. I think she's going to win. And, and why do you think she's going to win? She's got more money, got more energy, got, has a more united party, has better surrogates. And he's, he's stone ass nuts. OK, when you start talking about lining up a political opponent with nine people in a firing squad and then you, you have the Washington Post and the Los Angeles Times says, oh, I don't want to get involved in this. This is dirty politics. I mean, it's, Joe, it's unbelievable. Come on. You and I have been around the world once in Arkansas twice. We've never seen anything like this. Yeah. You know, you know, James, you and I, uh, we uh, we were on opposite sides a lot of our political career. Um, we uh, certainly in the 90s, whatever, the 2000s, I remember, um, you know, several times, Bill Clinton, you know, uh, you could impeach him on a Tuesday and on Wednesday, he'd invite you over and be talking about what bill we needed to pass the next day. I had one law partner who saw uh, uh, Bill Clinton sign something <laughs> for me after we had done long term care and said, Dear Joe, thanks for everything. And my partner said, thanks for everything. What? You impeached him. What are you? But that was a different time when Democrats and Republicans fought like hell, but they worked together for the betterment of America. And, and yet on our screen right now, I'm showing you Donald Trump. This isn't even a Democratic Republican battle. This is Donald Trump talking about executing uh, one of the most conservative Republicans in Congress over the past decade. Well, I, I, I can't wait to watch the cameras chase Lindsey Graham around the mall, see how fast he's going to run to get away from him. <laughs> now, well, yeah, it, I think I think I think there are going to be a lot of people that, again, will say, oh, I didn't hear it. <laughs> I didn't I didn't hear it. He didn't I, say it. Oh, well, he didn't mean it. Uh, Bradley, let's uh, turn to what we uh, led in with, and that is uh, your, uh, your group's uh, push to get the message out to Puerto Rican voters in the blue wall states about what Donald Trump and uh, those at Madison Square Garden thought and think of Puerto Ricans. Yeah, I think this goes to what you were talking about earlier, which is that some of these voters are sort of numb to these crazy things that Trump says. But when you look at him making a threat of overturning Roe v. Wade, he made good on that threat. When they talk about Puerto Rico being garbage, when they talk about Liz Cheney, uh, when they talk about overturning, re retracting and banning the ACA, taking away health care, I mean, these are all issues. Uh, when they talk about whether women not like it or not, they're straight from the horse's mouth. There's still three to four percent of swing voters in these states that are persuadable, and we're reaching them straight to to their in their inboxes, in their texts. They're over indexed online, and I think this is what it really comes down to. You have to let the, let them see Trump in his own words, let them see the threat, and if this is how you want to close a campaign on this closing message, this would not be on a bingo card of a successful winning campaign. So, Bradley, uh, so many campaigns every four years. Uh, are settled because of the economy. And obviously, as we've been discussing this morning, there are a lot of important issues on voters' minds right now. But for many, it, it is going to be those pocketbook items that matter the most. You know, we have seen, uh, you know, at times the Biden administration struggle to get credit uh, for the job it's done steering the economy. What, we, what is the closing argument that the Harris team, she, of course, part of that Biden administration, can make here in these couple days for those voters who still haven't made up their minds and are thinking about their wallets? 
Yeah, I think number one, you're seeing that this economy has been roaring, and that we we may not, you know, I think people will start to feel that. Number two, reproductive freedom is an economic issue. You know, you just heard a powerful story from Avery. When you talk about abortion, democracy, and freedom for a lot of these voters, you talk about child care, you talk about paid family leave. I mean, I, I don't think we should all be surprised that women are showing up in droves to vote for Harris. I agree with Donnie. They're going to save democracy. But child care, reproductive freedom, paid family leave, these are economic issues. And women are the dominant force in our politics right now, and we shouldn't forget it. You know, Joe said this earlier, this is an election where it's bros versus Roe. And if you want to bet on the bros, which Trump is doing, it's a risky bet. You've not seen it win before. All right, um, James, I'm curious. I know you think she's going to win, but in these final days, what would you like to, what would you like to see her doing? I mean, she's got to go to the places that she's going, and she has to draw a very sharp distinction, which I think is going to be easy to do because the, the events at Madison Square Garden followed up by assassinating firing squad for my political opponents. This is some, some pretty potent stuff. And Mika, let me tell you, he's going to find out, and Alito's going to find out, you, you've just agitated an entire hornet's nest of American women. And they're coming out. And if you look at these early vote numbers or you look at anything, the women of this country are just tired of, of being treated like they're being treated by Trump and Alito and the Supreme Court. And they, they're going to they're gonna tell people they don't like it. I, I promise you. And that piece that you did is, like, critically important for people to see. Democratic strategist James Carvillon, co-founder of American Bridge 21st Century, Bradley Baychok and uh, James Carville, thank you both very much for being on this morning.